Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Joanna, <laughs> and I'm glad you stopped by. Um, today I have going on, uh, you never know with me what I'm doing, um, but I'm going to show you um, some tips and some tricks, you know, and some organization things to help you in your craft room. Uh, let's get to it, shall we? I'm done jabbering. All right, so first things, my craft table. Um, I see people post about what kind of tables y'all have in sewing rooms on Facebook and things like that. So I'm just going to explain mine real quick. Um, I have had this for a while and it's working awesomely. It is a hollow core door from Lowe's. I bought the kind that did not have the pre-cut handle hole and I painted it white and it holds two mats as you can see and it is on for years i had it on a six foot fold out table and you want your sewing your your cutting table about waist high i used bed risers underneath of my uh table so you know that way it was right height for me but anywho um underneath when i had it on the six foot table I used this gripper right here. You can buy it at the Dollar Tree and it's to go under rugs, but I slid that underneath the table between, I mean, underneath, good Lord, underneath the door on the table so that my door wouldn't move, you know, when I was cutting and it worked fine. Anywho, that's the table and yeah. On this, I was able to screw in. My fabric scissors are like way different than my other scissors. I don't, nothing touches my fabric scissors but fabric. Uh, if you're a sewer or a seamstress, you know that is a rule. So those are here and they are hung up by screws on these um, racks that I get from the Dollar Tree in the mechanic section. And this one was just a little bit too long, so my hubby um, cut the ends off for me so I could put that one in there. It holds my rotary cutter. I put a string on it, and there's my trash, and it's lovely. Um, but I like how my tables have an edge on them on each end. Now there is a desk under there that was uh, pretty tall, so I don't need no risers or anything. The desk is great, and it's great height for me. Um, but anyways, the edges of the tables allow me to put the stool and my trash there and then some other storage on the other end. Um, one tip when you're sewing is they have these little fancy plastic clips that you can use. I buy these from Hobby Lobby when they go on sale. And that's what I use to clip my fabric and patterns and whatnot. And I put it in a magnetic dish from Harbor Freight. I love these things. But anyway, they're in there so they don't go nowhere and I use them and then I just flick them back in it. This I just made in a previous video. These are made with steel wool and they sharpen my pins. I have a tutorial in a video I posted earlier. Um, it's in my playlist. These are my pins. I keep them separated. These are for patterns. And then I have a place for my you know my pins where I string elastic and this jar will hold things that usually get lost like my seam rippers and these are the best seam rippers ever and my snippers and various things so those are real handy to have in your room while I'm up here I'll also tell you a tip if you're making pillows and stuffing projects and things like that use a pillow to stuff your pillows <laughs> These Walmart pillows are way cheaper than polyfill and you can get the cheap pillows for like $3 and something at Walmart and you get more bang for your buck when it comes to the polyfill. Another thing I like to have in my craft room is this caddy. I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at craft stores anywhere. Um, I use command hooks to store scissors that are different um it has drawers in the bottom i used toilet paper holders um i painted these because they stuck up so this is to separate my stuff back here 
I buy these at my local um, building supply stores, Lowe's, anywhere I have them. They're just big, heavy washers, and I use these as pattern weights. Um, some people have decorated them and whatnot. You know, I just don't care. I know what they're for. Um, I have a magnet. It actually was glued on here, but it came off. But there's something in here, and it still sticks to that little, little magnet. So that holds that on there. There's my little, you know, for my chalks. I have more toilet paper holders. Y'all don't throw stuff away. They come in handy. These are good to have. They're friction pins. You can order them on Amazon. I think I got these at Walmart. Um, but they go away with heat. You can actually erase it with this little doodad right here. But I use those a lot when I am doing sublimation and have to mark things. They work better than the pins. And another toilet paper holder. So anyways, this caddy just has toilet paper holders all in it and these are very <laughs> handy handy for your room um they're nice to have i love to collect vintage sewing machines uh, my husband's got me kind of spoiled with them and uh so this is granny um they don't come with thread cutters so this handy dandy little doodad right here is made by singer and you can get them at Hobby Lobby. I know Joann's may have them, but they have a cutter in them. And they are peel and stick. So I just peeled that little booger and stuck it to my machine. And that helps me cut my threads. And I have them on my sergers as well because they ain't got thread cutters. So I hung them on there and then I put them on my older style machines. I have seen posts with people asking how do you store your zippers and things of that. I save a lot of cans. This one actually is a is an old coffee can. I should probably have it on my coffee bar, but I, I like it in here better. And this has my zippers in it. And I just take them off the cardboard and I write what length they are. And then I stick it to the zipper somewhere. And then I know I staple it and then I know you know what zippers are what and things like that I've also seen people um, hang their zippers on um, clothespins to um, clothes hangers I'll get it in a minute y'all bear with me this is how I hold my quilting rulers um, I don't even quilt, but I have their rulers. They come in handy for a lot of other stuff too. So anyways, I just got my rulers right there. This is another one of my quilting rulers and they sell these at Walmart and in craft stores, but I know they're at Walmart and they're in where the bathtubs are and they are made for, you know, when you're taking a bath and you need help to get up or whatnot, but they actually suction to your rulers and, uh, they um are you know handy to hold to keep your fingers out of the way when you're using your rotary cutter this right here is embroidery thread for my embroidery machine i feel like i'm moving in slow motion because i have to see me going through here but anyways I i'm trying y'all this is new to me i feel like i'm doing a live but anyway all my colors are sorted out for my embroidery right there I wish this was a metal shelf, but all I have is plastic and I redone my room. So I put all of my machines on this and they're easy to pull out whenever I need them. And this works for me. And my serger light, y'all, this is funny. I, I rig things by nature, but this is an old serger and the light wasn't very good. So I bought one of these Dollar Tree lights and I stuck it on with command hooks and that you know moves so it shines right down where I need it and you can use those a lot of places in your in your room um, people have asked about button storage uh, a lot of people throw theirs in a jar and that's fine but I cannot do that I have to have mine categorized so I got one of these you can pick these up at Walmart or 
you know, anywhere. I've had this one for a long time. I repainted it and it's scuffing. Um, but anyways, I have all my buttons all sorted out in my drawers and this is just what works for me. Um, this is my thread. It wasn't on this. I just put this pegboard up. I had it on thread stands from Walmart, but I put them on this pegboard because I had it, you know, laying around and I said, why not use it? And I had the peg hooks available. So I took the peg hooks and hung my thread on there. And this to me is working out for me a little better and I can hang more thread on there. So that's working great. This is a little trash can that I made from a coffee can, a recycle project I have in a video. And I have this here because I was throwing my little threads in the floor when I snipped them. And I'll move this when I need it and put it beside me so that I don't throw my stuff in the floor because it gets hung in my chair wheels. This is one of my machines that I collect. This is my great granny. Um, she works, she's a treadle. And the reason I'm showing you this is because, you know, I utilize any space that I have because I feel like I don't have enough space. So with this machine stand, it has all those drawers in the side, okay? So I take advantage of that. Um, this machine is just sitting on it and it's just got a little board across it. So, you know, there's a hole there. So you ain't gonna have your machine fall in the hole. Um, but I'll just show you you know, some storage solutions that I have in here. This is my presser feet that I use most when I'm sewing. And y'all, I got real technical when I built this bad boy. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. It's got tape. It's got cut craft sticks and it's made out of uh cardstock i i really did put some ingenuity into spacing that cardstock out though i will tell you but anyways this is how my presser feet are arranged in there um maybe you can find a simpler way i don't know this is just presser feet that i use occasionally when putting in elastic and and whatnot a specialty feet and then i have carpal tunnel so i have my gloves in here and my extra screwdrivers and y'all trying to sew on this thing because it actually I'm not I'm trying not to show you my foot but it works so you got to have some you know steady feet down there when you're doing that but it's good I got it it's all under control I did have a ball chair in here but I gave that away because when my music thumping I used to jump up and down on the ball chair and I couldn't get nothing done um this has my machine, my, you know, machine, this machine parts in here. Um, they're all vintage parts. And then in this one, this is how I store bobbins. This is one way I store bobbins. Um, this is a silicone ice tray. It makes the sticks, you know, I got it at Walmart and my bobbins fit in there perfect and go in this little drawer. So that's, that's a good deal. And then this is where my needles are. These needles are in one of these and they're all sort sorted out and I just took yard sale stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree and put the um, number of my needle in the bottom and then put my needles on it and you can move them around to see and they sell these everywhere Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, Walmart, whatever. While I'm down here, um, power surgers. Okay, this is a tip you may not know. Um, some, most of the computerized sewing machines have a motherboard in them. Um, if you just plug them into a wall, uh, you need to unplug them when you're done. If you even plug them in this power serger, I unplug mine when I'm done. This is not a power strip, it's a power serger. It has a high joule which is voltage that it can handle if electric or lightning hits it and it will save your machines so it's better to pay the extra money to get a surge protector rather than a power strip because it'll save you money in the long run with your machine these are excellent 
bobbin holders as well um you can buy them i think on amazon you can find them online you can find them at a place called wawak w-a-w-a-k dot com but the only thing with these bobbins is they only hold the metal ones um otherwise you know they're 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 good bobbin holders if you use metal bobbins um i don't all the time so i put that up and then i've also got just a regular um tray that's plastic it holds them it just wouldn't fit in my drawer another thing i do is i put command hooks you can get these at the dollar tree the clear the ones with the clear backing are they stick a whole lot better but I just hang my snippers so I always have them handy this is a handy little tool you can buy this at Amazon or Joann's um, but this right here a needle fits right down in there um, I would show you but I only have one hand um, this other end is a needle threader I mean yeah needle threader thread threader whatever you want to call it and then this is a hook when you thread it you pull your thread through so that you don't pull all your thread out this is held on I use these uh, pin pin pal pin grips and they have adhesive backs you just peel it off and stick it down make sure you clean it with alcohol help it stick better to hold my rotary blades and other blades i have one of these boxes from harbor freight i mean not harbor freight good lord i never know where i'm going i think i saw blades in there from harbor freight that's a tip too um but anyways dollar tree i'll get my thoughts together in a minute y'all i got this at the dollar tree and it holds my blades now the tip about the blades rotary cutters now they got these at Harbor Freight and they are way cheaper than buying blades at a store. Uh, they're carpet blades, but you know, they fit in a rotary, 45 millimeter rotary cutter and they work awesome. Um, so that's just stored in one of my drawers and I'll show you that in a minute. Another tip I have for any sewer, if you do not know, um, when you do your thread, you are to clip it at the top okay and then go down to your needle and pull your thread that way because when you pull it backwards your tension on your machines are made to go down when you pull it backwards you're going against your tension so it can sometimes mess up the tension of your um, sewing machine so it's best to pull them out this way not back up that way I also have this little thing back here that I made I save machine parts and somebody gave me an old serger that didn't work anymore I tried to fix it but I couldn't so I took this off I said well if I can't fix it I'm gonna use it somehow so I took this off and this and that is one piece that came off the serger I fixed it with a, um, E6000 to a board down here that I had previously screwed dowel rods into. And then it goes down here to a board. And then I have um, golf tees glued down. And that's what my thread sits on. It has these big cones right now because I got them on sale and it was actually a lot cheaper. Um, to buy it that way this is my ironing station anytime I can you know you can get a dresser in your craft room they are handy um, they have all the drawers to store stuff in this one has patterns in it um, and then you saw the other one just has storage for my for my rotary blades and all that junk but this actually holds my board um, that needs a new cover desperately apparently um, but anyways I got this this is on a piece of plywood 
and I covered it with aluminum foil, heavy duty aluminum foil, because when you use steam on your iron, the steam won't penetrate through the foil and mess up your board that's underneath. And all I did was stretch this and put staples, staple gun, and, and put staples in it and stretched it over it. But you get this at Joann's is where I got mine. And then, like I said, my patterns are all stored in my drawers. And this may not be a tip, but just a personal preference. I have owned, you know, I've been doing this for, for years, and I have owned a lot of irons, sorry to say. I have had Rowentas. No offense to them. They were good irons while they lasted, but they did not last. Um, I've had this one for about three or four years now, maybe more. I have no sense of time sometimes. But anyway, um, I can't pronounce that, but that's the name. But this is an excellent iron, in my opinion. I bought it off Amazon. I will try to put a link to it in my description box for you. But these are very, very good irons. Um, I'm going to move up here. Shower Caddy from the Dollar Tree. And it holds my water from my iron. By the way, the iron takes tap water which is straight from your sink. That's what it's designed for, and that's what it takes. Um, but anyways, my lint rollers, my water bottle was on there, but I hung it on a peg hook. My scissor snippers, and then I have another pegboard. Like I said, I already had pegboard, and I love pegboards, y'all. They're very handy. I got my rulers on there, my tape. Okay, I'm gonna explain some things on this pegboard. This is a miter saw and they have holes in them. You probably can't see it. No, I stuck a dowel rod that fit exactly and I hammered it in that uh, hole and your saw will have a hole on it and it holds to it and then you can hang it by the handle for easy storage. Pat on the back for me. Just kidding. These are magnet bars from Harbor Freight. They have holes on the end for you to screw them into your wall or whatever. They hang over peg hooks too. And then I have two of those and I must say, they're one of my favorite things in my room. I love them. Harden my junk up here. This toolbox came from Harbor Freight. It's a US General. They go on sale from time to time and this holds some stuff y'all seriously i had my heat press on it at one time but it was just i think i'm shrinking to be honest with you the older i get and it was too tall for me and i couldn't i couldn't handle it anymore so i put it on something different um also from harbor freight but anyways this thing comes up and i just got stuff that i don't really use in there very much this is full of junk i mean it holds a lot of stuff um, as you can see, it's got a lot of stuff in it. It's got a lot of Dollar Tree bins holding my glues and tapes and whatnot. You can stick magnets to this, and that's extra storage. This has more Dollar Tree bins with all my sanding stuff. I also have a hook down here to hold my heat gun. I'm pretty sure I got these at Walmart, and I hung it on my desk, and then I put a um, zip tie on there, and this thing gets hot when you use it so I just stick it right down on there and this has a, like a rubber thing and it sticks right on it so that it can sit over there and nothing gets burnt I have a glass top if you can find one these are wonderful I can put my mat under there I can see through it to see my measurements on my mat I paint on this I glue on this and when I'm done I just take a scraper right here that I got at Walmart and just scrape it all off. It all scrapes off and then, and if you don't have one of these, you definitely need one. I'll try to also link one in my Amazon, but they just, you know, it's your ladybug back. I've showed it several times and it sucks up all kinds of stuff and it's a powerful little vacuum to say the least uh 
You can buy these. Sorry for my uh. <laughs> you can buy these at thrift stores a lot of times. That's where I got mine. They're cup, you know, cup storage for coffee cups and whatnot in your kitchen. Well, I spray painted mine with Rust-Oleum 2X paint. And I hung my scissors and my rotary cutter that's in this station that I cut God knows what with these. Um, they're over here away from my other scissors. And this is, you know, I like this. Whenever I have wood, sorry, my finger got in the way. I don't get rid of it. I had CD towers, media towers with ribbon on it. I took it apart because I needed shelves. So I bought some of those L shelf brackets at Walmart. They're relatively cheap at Walmart. And I just used my shelves that was on my CD tower to hold my stuff. And this works out really, really well. Lighting is very important in a craft room. I buy all LED daylight bulbs. They give you the best light and the best color. And this one just sits right up there and I used rubber bands to secure it on there so it won't move. Um, another power surger. This I stuck on with heavy duty industrial tape on the back and I plug in my stuff, my glue guns when I need it when I'm working at this desk and that works really well because it's up where I can reach it and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, I've showed these previously, but I'm going to go over them again. These are my dishwasher silverware inserts that I keep. Um, if I find them somewhere, I grab them because they're great for storage. I repainted them. I have my glue guns and these paint brushes and the other ones. I took the, um, when I took the glue out, I took and cut out what they were and glued them to the board behind it. And this is very, very easy and it helps a lot. And then I use contact paper in case I splatter paint. I can just wipe it off or replace it easy. Okay, this will help you not put so many holes in your walls or, you know, wall anchors. And this is a stable way to hang stuff. And I just put a pallet board that I sanded and repainted on the back into studs and then screwed everything else in it. I hope you can read this. These are my weight loss beans. My friend gave me those. She thought it was funny. She knows my sense of humor. This is one of the media towers and I use it for paint storage. And this works out great. I bought these at Walmart. Um, I don't know if they still have them, but you can find things like that. Sorry about my crud on my table over there. But anyways, I got all my paint sorted out. And there, right there, is drawers from one of the existing ones that... Um, I can use as shelves if I want to or just wood, you know, in general or whatever. Anytime I can, I use under the desk or under the table storage by using Walmart storage bins. It's a very cheap, um, cost-effective route to go and you can hold a lot of stuff in these. Over the door storage is also very handy. Um, you can use hooks like that go over the door like I used here you can use shoe racks you know whatever um, you can find to hang over the door for storage is always a great option this is my ribbon storage I had done this idea along a whole wall when I first got into making hair bows and I put this on Pinterest and it has went all over creation by now of course I liked it so I just done it again for this little bit of ribbon that I have here this is my vinyl people organize vinyl differently I organize mine this way this is the best way that I have found um, it keeps my vinyl from getting dusty so I labeled the bins with I labeled my vinyl with my vinyl <laughs> and that is you know something that just works perfect for me um, I have a ruler that is um, usually found in the sewing section you know um, and I'm at my desk and I'll measure how much my vinyl pieces are and I'm able to line them up to here when I get to my scraps and find a piece that fits as opposed to you know going back and forth and whatnot and then I put a piece of wood you know that the the ruler tape is on 
to store that other bin on top so that I could store stuff in here in that little drawer and I was able to stack more and then just you know both are full of vinyl so here is my bench from Harbor Freight and I love it because it has pegboard um it had a drawer in the bottom here and I took it out so that I could put this other thing here it holds my glitter vinyl my heat tape and my um transfer tape and then this holds my sticky vinyls my permanent and my um pull off or whatever this holds my heat mats which are good for doing different size shirts and then up here I have magnets these are from Walmart and I love them magnets stick very well to anything that's you know any of these things in your room that are metal um, these hooks I get at Walmart and I have to bend them out just a little to get them in here but it holds the Dollar Tree bins with a lot of my weeding tools this is from the Dollar Tree and I cut slits in it with my exacto knife and this is what I put sticky vinyls in um, that way my scraps go in there and I don't have to I can't stand sticking them on my fingers um, also I have these hooks that I love and they're from Hobby Lobby and they're I think they're in the mosaic glass or they're in with the clay I'm not sure but um, you can also use a wipe container and when you do heat transfer vinyl it just pulls right off and then you have it all in there um, another thing that I like to use for heat transfer vinyl is this polish nail polish ring um, they are handy to put your vinyl in they just stick right on your fingers and then you know this hook is very sharp so it's great for picking up vinyl um, I only use the hook when I do heat transfer vinyl because I find that that works best for me it doesn't work for me very well when I do sticky vinyl or adhesive vinyl um, but anyway uh, these work well for the adhesive vinyl these I get at um, Hobby Lobby in the yarn section they're by Yarnology uh, they do not go on sale and they're about eight nine dollars these are always at the Dollar Tree and these are super super simple to use you just poke the sticky vinyl that needs to be weeded poke it pull up and then dispose of it and it's a whole lot easier to use a pokey pen um, see it pokes it very well and this is heat transfer and another tip is I love to use this thing um, just a lint roller and I took it off or you could leave it on it don't matter and I just when I'm doing I just poke when I'm doing adhesive vinyl just poke it and stick it poke it and stick it. it's easy um, these are an alternative to the what's called a pen pen that is expensive and it's just to take a uh, mechanical pencil and put a needle in it take the lead out and replace it with a needle that you can get you you I buy it as a sorted pack so that I could figure out which one fits in there better and holds but those make great weeding pens for adhesive vinyl um, you don't have to have an expensive one this cheap one works just as well and those are excellent weeding tools this is a, just a container you can get pretty much anywhere that I separated my um, silhouette to cameo blades in and this works for me to know which one is what and what I use it for these are my silhouette mats you can do your cricket mats or whatever um, hanging them by command hooks on the wall these have been there for years and have worked great for me um, this is my shelf I'm thankful for my Dollar Tree bins to help me get organized but anytime you have a small room utilize any wall space you have by shelving or shelving units and this I have my cords in this basket because I keep losing them behind the desk so this is my cameo cords and I've got them all in one spot and they hook around in here so that they're not slipping and falling down and this has worked great and I've also got my 
power strip on the wall so it's easy accessible. This is storage under my desk. This is the computer desk that I have. It has drawers in it. My laptop is in this one. And this has extra needles and things like that all sorted out in these little things. Um, but these hold my wood craft sticks. Um, you know, you can see in there different wood. Sorry, Whew, I'm upside down. And this one has my metal words and my die cuts and then, you know, picture frames and wood that I get from the Dollar Tree um, frames and all that stuff. Okay, this is my printer. It's just a HP inkjet printer. Um, I've got it sitting on a thing from Walmart um, that you put your paper in. I flipped it upside down and that's what it's in. And then I made a little cardboard box because I cannot get a um, Dollar Tree tray or any other thing to fit under there. And this is just what I rigged up to get my paper in and out, slide in and out easy. And my um, since the thing was upside down, it gives me room to do all that and then my storage on top. And this is easy, you know, to take off when I have to print something. This is... Um, it's not a tip. It's just cute. Um, these are in the scrapbooking from the paper studio. It's little um, embellishments. And I used E6000 and I put them on pins, push pins. And I just thought that was really cute. And um, I thought it was better than seeing a little push pin. See, there's the push pin. You just E6000, leave them overnight. And there you go. And then over here are my buttons. Um, these were just the magnets that came with the dry erase boards. And I just put E6000 on them. I strung a string through them, put E6000, and that's my buttons. I almost I forgot to show you this. This is my paper. Um, it I, is tracing paper. I sewed. I bought it off of Amazon. I several and, sizes that need to be made. Um, it's just like what they used I could not you know, some people with and I have patterns over after they cut on and all that. that you know, I, I can't do that. Came on. It would mess me up. And I just slipped that pattern. with an X-Acto knife so or a razor knife it's like what goes to put off the top so it doesn't come open every time I walk by. I got it at Amazon a hundred years ago. And this is one of my cardboard tubes from This I used to trace patterns when I done children's clothes. I would, I would take paper, this I and I would lay the pattern up here because I didn't want to I cut it with a curtain rod and pattern and cleaners on and a, the screw. Um, this slips over the screw so I can change it or uh, use it somewhere curtain else. Curtain rod with and I would take and put my pattern you know, on my table. cleaners. Then whatever. I would take this and roll it up and but I would anyways, trace out my I would take my and then cut out the size pattern needed, and I would put lay them in different envelopes and store them on the white surface. Made it so much easier. have you and then I didn't have to worry about I would lay the paper over it and I was able to trace what size I needed without having to cut all my patterns because all I done was trace them and not cut them. I use little chubby fat pipe cleaners I buy at Hobby Lobby and these are great for cleaning out the lint and extra strings from your um, sewing machines when you you know clean out your feed dogs and and whatnot and take your machine apart which you should do every once in a while and um, be because of lint buildup in there um, you need to clean them out and these actually work better than the brush they go in places that your brush can't go and it collects all the lint because it sticks to it. I just want to mention this tip as well. Some will not agree with this and that's fine. It's your preference, but I use duck adhesive. Um, I buy this at Walmart. They have it in a smaller roll. They were just out when I got this one. It's numbered for you. This is all I use for my sticky vinyl, y'all. This has worked best for me um, through the years. I have not had a problem using this. I use Oracle vinyl most of the time. Um, but this works with Cricut vinyl and everything. And this is way cheaper and it works just as good. I have tried the contact paper from the Dollar Tree. Cannot get it to work for me. The duck, usually 100%. And when I do sublimation, I need blowout paper. You can buy um, rolls. It's cheaper at Sam's to buy rolls of butcher paper for your blowout paper. 
And what blowout paper is, is when y'all put your sublimation on your t-shirts, the ink goes down into the fibers. Well, it can soak down into the fibers and come out on the back of your shirt if you ain't got nothing in between. This paper is thick and you put this in between your shirt so that it doesn't bleed through to the back. This is a good tip to get magnets, strong magnets, and put your, I don't know what this is called, but you know what I'm talking about, to put this over your machine so that you don't never have to put it down or forget that you have to put it down. It's already attached. And this is a cover that I bought to, to go on it. Um, it's hard, hard to get on. But anyways, when you do sublimation, you don't use these, but you have to have paper. So when I'm doing the designs, this is 12 inches. I don't usually do designs over 12 inches wide. So um, if I do, then I just turn it and use two. But I use the parchment paper from the Dollar Tree. And I can pull out however much I want and cut it off. And this works amazing to put on top. So you need paper inside your shirt and paper on top of your shirt. This is the paper for on top of your shirt. And what this paper does is collects any moisture through your sublimation. Okay, this is not in my craft room, but I've seen people asking on Facebook how they uh, how to store florals. And this is how I store mine. It is on my door and what's supposed to be our pantry, but my husband says I'm taking over the whole stinking house. But um, anyway, off that topic, um, this is hung on plastic bins from the Dollar Tree these right here and I just stuck command hooks in the corners and hung it you know just stuck it to the door and then I poke my florals down in these holes and people have said that they don't they don't um, work well for them but uh, honey you you poke them in hard enough and they're gonna stay okay um, you also have to have the right angle but I don't have a problem getting them in there and staying that's how they're in there but anyway um, you do want to put them on a wall or a door that you don't care about or mount it on a piece of wood and then put it on your door or your wall or something like that because it will scratch the back. Okay, this is kind of funny, but you're at my kitchen sink. Um, I've talked to you about how I clean out my brushes and this is a brush that I have had Waverly wax on and it's been there for quite some time. I soaked it even in dish soap and water last night and it didn't come out but you just put a little soap on your brush rub back and forth this does not tear up your bristles and then just go forward and rub that soap down in them bristles and then rinse it out and I do it again just to make sure there's nothing in there and there wasn't all of it out good as new um i hope that i have said something to inspire you and to help you out so with all that being said till next time god bless